This series of videos is called The Truth About Nutrients, and in it we're going to go over how to mix and use nutrients, yes. But we're also going to go over how to think about them. And I know trying to calculate how many nutrients and how often you should feed with them can seem overwhelming at first. And that's because everybody has been explaining it to you all wrong until now. So keep watching and I'll show you everything you need to know about nutrients. And the truth is brutal and brought to you by Humboldt Nutrients. And this is episode number one. And the theme is nutrient basics because I know how very excited you are to read and precisely follow all the directions on all the labels of all these bottles because you want to use all these awesome products right now. And I can understand that. But before we do that, there's some basic information you need to know about, and I don't care what nutrient brand you bought or are using, because even though Humboldt Nutrients is sponsoring the truth about nutrients, and even though we recommend Humboldt Nutrients in the store because they're easy to use and inexpensive to buy, it's still all the same shit. So keep watching, and by the end of the series, I'm going to prove it to you. So, let's start with an introduction. Hi. I'm the grow boss and I have a hydro store where I get to meet lots of growers and listen to their stories, which is exactly how I wrote my book, The Grow Book and Equipment Guide, because for years now, I've been collecting and writing down all the questions my customers ask. And if at any time during this video, you want to find your closest hydro store or where you can buy my book or any of the humble nutrient products you see in these videos, just click the opportunity button when it pops up or go to everyhydrostore.com. And now let's go over some nutrient basics. For instance, look at all these bottles on the shelves of hydro stores. Just look at all that shit. It's like the candy aisle at a gas station. And those bottles are beautiful, right? The vendors really do put a lot of effort into the labels trying to catch your attention, right? And yet, they're all about the same, aren't they? Because I'm sure the NPK and the micros they use in this bottle are the same as the micros and NPKs they use in that bottle. Just like it's all the same NPK and micros that are on the periodic table of elements, right? Besides, most of this shit is probably made outside the U.S., like everything else. And even if they produce them locally, how much different can U.S. nitrogen be from Colombian nitrogen or nitrogen de Mexicana, know what I mean? After all, there's only one nitrogen on the periodic table of elements. And now that you understand that, it also means, for the most part, all this shit is about the same. So... Let's go over what's the same about them, and then we'll go over what's different about them so you can make an informed decision instead of using your friend's secret sauce. And the best way to do that is to start by explaining the basic differences between the base nutrients, Humboldt nutrient cells. Two part, three part, one part, what you need, I got. So, let's start with their oneness, and this is a 594. And what that means for now is that there's five part nitrogen, nine parts phosphorus, and four parts potassium. And of course, there are all the micros the plant needs in here too, which is why it's called One Mist, because it has everything you need all in the one bottle. And even though it does have all 16 micros in there, micros are only listed on the ingredient list on the back label, and never as numbers on the front, like the NPK numbers. And then we move to Humboldt Nutrients, Cannabis Cup, award-winning line, Master A and B. Now, this is a true two-part, which means according to the schedule, you're always using both parts. And part A is a 403, and part B is a 056. And this is usually what two-part nutrients do. They separate the N for veg and the PK for flower. That's why over the entire grow, you generally use more part B than part A, because flower is twice as long as veg. 
and the plants are much bigger. Which brings us back to those NPK numbers, and while you already know they represent the three main nutrients and the ratios between them, they also represent the ratios the plant wants at different times of her life cycle, right? Because plants want more N during veg, just like they want meat, more P for their roots and shoots when transitioning into flower, just like she wants that K when she's building buds. Humboldt Nutrient also makes a two-part, all-natural line, and this is a little different than their master line, in that the schedule only calls for the veg during veg, but in flower, you're using both parts. And with this line, they isolated the phosphorus in bloom instead of the phosphorus and potassium like they did with the master line, which is exactly what some strains want. And that's why we go over those type of ideas in experimentation and advanced strategies in episode. And finally, the classic three part where they separate the veg from the flower from the micro. And even though the micro has the highest nitrogen, which the plants want during veg, it does have all the micros in it too. So I guess it's a micro, even though I would think with numbers like these, it should be the grow nutrient, but whatever. And again, with the three part, you always add more from the veg bottle during veg and more from the flower bottle during flower. And you use the micro all the way through, even though that N is so high which is another reason why I tell you it's all the same shit. Now, let's talk about how we're going to actually mix these nutrients. Okay, before we start mixing nutrients, let's start by identifying how we are going to compare all these different nutrient products so we can know what's the same about them and what to expect from the results. Otherwise, we have no static baseline for comparison. See what I mean? Which is one of the reasons everybody is so confused when it comes to using nutrients. First, we're always going to assume a four-week veg and an eight-week flower. So everything will be in terms of a 12-week schedule, which means week five is actually the first week of flower, and we're going to start the two-week finish at week 10. Second, we're going to start by testing everything with the same volume of nutrients, 5 mils. So later, we can compare concentration in addition to the suggested amount on the feed charts. And third, we will be testing the PPM of our Ultimate RO water and the nutrients with the Grow Boss Megameter and documenting all that so we can extrapolate the data and build a suggested trend line as we go through the series. And again, we are doing all that so we can build a static baseline so we can compare like terms, like how many PPMs per mil in what week. So let's start with oneness. And the schedule wants five mils per gallon in week four or five, which is the transition between the fourth week of veg and the first week of flower. And we mix and stir. And according to the megameter, the PPMs are at 450. And now we know that Humboldt thinks that five mils and 450 PPMs is appropriate for week four or five transition. And since the label calls for up to 15 mils per gallon in week 10, and since the feed chart calls for just seven mils, I say we split the difference and call it at about one mil per gallon per week. And now we know that Humboldt wants us to feed an average of one mil or 90 ppm per week. And now we have their oneness scale, about one mil and 90 ppm per week. Now let's add to that information by adding more data points and we can do that by testing the rest of their nutrients. Okay, this is master A and B. And this is a classic two part where you always add some of both bottles and you just use more part A and veg and more part B and flour. And with this line, five mils of each is what they suggest for week three flour or week seven total. And the PPMs are 450 and we're five mils 
of the oneness is 450 ppm. Five mils of part A and part B is 450 ppm too. But even though it's twice the volume, if we add the NPK rating of these two bottles together, it equals 18, just like the NPK rating of the oneness, which is why I tell you, it's not the volume of nutrients you need to worry about, it's the concentration. And at 450 ppm, the master line is really close to their oneness. But remember, ppms doesn't tell the whole story. We also have to account for time. And where the oneness schedule calls for 450 ppm in week one flower, the master schedule suggests 450 ppm in week three flower. So let's update the chart with that amount here at week five flower. Now let's mix their two part all natural. This is all natural from Humboldt and this two part calls for five mils pretty much right after transition and goes as high as 12 mils before the flush and five mils of grow and five mils of bloom together bring the ultimate RO water up to a PPM of 425 which when plotted against their oneness and master line seems to be really close to the concentration of their other nutrients. But the timing of that amount of PPM seems to match more closely to the master line than the oneness. Now, let's mix their three part and talk a little more about those three numbers on the front of every bottle. Just about every nutrient manufacturer makes a three part and Humboldt is no difference. And this stuff calls for five mils of each, starting at week three flower, and goes as high as 21 mils total at week 10. But then, what do you expect from a three part? It's more advanced, because a three part separates out veg from flower and micro, and it gives you more control over what you're adding. And at five mils each from the grow, micro, and bloom, we're at 650 ppm which right off the bat is a little higher than the two part master line and the natural line. And so let's take a look at the feed chart to see what week the three part suggests five mils of each for and bam, week three flower again. And now with this much data, we can plot a trend line. And there it is, the average, the compromise, right between all their different nutrients which means on average, Humboldt Nutrient suggests on average about 500 ppm during week three flower or week seven overall. So if you follow their charts, it would vary around the average of about 75 ppm per week. So in week one, you'd be at 75 ppm. In week five, you would be at 500 ppm. And by week 10, you would be at 750 ppm just before you flush, where you're at the max PPM Humboldt Nutrient is calling for, you would be at, on average, at about 750 PPM. Which is why I always tell you, start your garden by thinking about how you're going to end it. And if you're at 1000 PPM at week 10, when your plants are full sized, how can you possibly justify feeding a little one week old plant like it's a 10 week old plant? Because according to the slope of the trend line, we plotted based on the Humboldt nutrient feed schedules. If you started here, then you'd have to end here, right? And that seems like a lot of nutrients when photosynthesis is based on light, water, and CO2, and that nowhere in that equation do nutrients exist. But more importantly, if this is a schedule for a four week veg and an eight week flower under a thousand watt light, we're going to have to do everything exactly the same as the schedule was built for. We would have to veg 10 plants in one gallon smart pots for four weeks before transplanting into five gallon smart pots for flower. And we're probably going to have to water every five to seven days on average, feeding every other time. But more importantly, now that we know veg time, flower time, light watts, plant count, bucket size, and our PPM schedule, can you see how altering any one input changes all the others? 
Because if you double plant count, you have to both shorten veg time and change the bucket size, which means you're going to have to adjust your nutrients accordingly, right? Which again, is why I always laugh when customers tell me that they're going to use their friend's secret sauce. Or you come in talking about some sort of super soil, or how you are precisely and exactly following the feed schedule charts or the suggested amount on these bottles. Or you think there's some difference between media-based grows and hydro grows, which we will get into more into in episode four, hydro versus soil. One more comment on the schedules and the instructions on the bottles before we go on, and we're gonna go over this again in episode six, experimentation and advanced strategies. But for now, I'd just like to point out that while the oneness and the three part both include a weekly schedule on the back, the nutrient bottle only suggests five mils per gallon, regardless of the week. And while the three part tells you how many mils per liter to add, the oneness and natural lines suggest mils per gallon. And where the schedules on the three part and oneness bottles are based on a two week veg, the printed schedules for the same nutrients are based on a four week veg. And this is not a manufacturer error limited to Humboldt nutrients. All nutrient vendors do it just like that. And they do it because the more confusion that surrounds nutrients and the more mystique they can create and surround the cannabis growing process with, the more shit they can sell you. And the easier it is for them to blame your failure on anything but their nutrients. And we'll go over that more in episode six, experimentation and advanced strategies. But for now, I just want to be clear that even though these labels and schedules are confusing and designed to trick you, when you know what's important, they go a lot deeper than what's on the bottle, if you want to use them correctly. Okay, you're probably more confused than ever. And that's why we're going to build upon and tie in this information in episode number two, concentration and quality, because that's where we are going to talk more about the ratio between N, P, and K, and what the vendors are telling us we need to add for veg and for flour versus the reality of the situation. And now that we created a baseline to compare, we are going to go even deeper into how much and how often to feed. For now, though, let's finish up this episode. Okay, I'm the Grow Boss, and this is The Truth About Nutrients, a series with everything you need to know about the reality of using nutrients, sponsored by Humboldt Nutrients. And if you like the video, don't forget to buy Humboldt Nutrients and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions between now and then, you can always schedule a consult with me by clicking on the opportunity link or going to my website. Trust me, I know how much you've spent and how much time you have invested in this. And I promise, I can fix your garden in about an hour. So call me before you quit.